Welcome! And on today's show, I bought a Vostok. But before I show you that, today's shot comes from Watch and Carry. Whoa, this is a beauty, isn't it? We've got ourselves an AE1200 WHB-3BV modded up to the nines. So what can we see here? Well, the subdials are in yellow to match that beautiful yellow gold bracelet. Also, I notice he's put a lovely negative display in there and it looks very good. You've made a one of a kind there, my friend. Thanks for tagging me in. If you'd like to be on the next Casio Corner, all you gotta do, find me on Instagram here and tag me in on one of your Casio posts. Who knows? Next time, the star of the show could be you. So yes, a Vostok Did and a Vostok. Well, today I'm wearing the Squale 1521 50 Atmos. I've got it on my lovely Squale mesh bracelet. And this thing really makes me want to be a diver. What a beautifully blue, vintage-inspired diving stunner. Okay, yes, I've done it. I bought a Vostok, didn't I? I wasn't truly bowled over by the Amphibia, the very well-known and popular diver, but I thought, why not have a look at its older brother? The Komandersky. Yes, in 1967, Vostok got a little call from the Russian MOD, wanting them to make a lovely durable field watch for their commanders, needing it to be water-resistant, shock-proof, and dust-proof, and reliable if possible. And fast forward to today, the watch hasn't changed at all. Yes, you can get fancy designs and patterns on the dials, but at the end of the day, the innovation and the engine inside is the same. I bought this on Amazon for £45. Now, the question we've got to ask ourselves, right, is, is it any good? And is it value for money? Well, there's only one way to find out. I guess it's time to see it. Let's go! Well, when it comes to you, it arrives in a box like this. Now, yes, you could be thinking this is a box of painkillers or chocolate buttons. <laughs> But no, out pops a watch. Get rid of the manual and the warranty that's all in Russian anyway. And there it is. Cool. Wow. For a field watch, this one looks a bit blingy, doesn't it? I chose this dial out of many, many choices because A, I liked the blue and B, I didn't really want a huge picture on it. Like a tank. Well, the case, um, well, it's not stainless steel. I wish it was. It's brass and it's chrome plated. Ugh. So very gaudy and just looks brighter and shinier than stainless steel. Almost plastic like. Looked a little bit like a toy, if I'm honest. So we got a screw down crown at three. Very big and chunky, lovely. And a two piece screw down case back. Now you can see that the case back is stainless steel. Far better looking, isn't it? I guess they made it stainless steel just in case you had an allergic reaction to their brass stroke chrome plating. <laughs> okay, protecting the dial, we have this domed acrylic crystal. So it does mean it's going to scratch a bit, but with the help of the likes of Polywatch, you can shine that glass up pretty quick. Even though it has the screw down case back and the screw down crown and that acrylic dome crystal, it is just 20 meters water resistant. What the? F Let's let it off because it is a field watch. A little mention on that strap has to be the worst thing I've seen on a watch ever. It's hideous, a monstrosity, so rough. If that thing's leather, I'd hate to see the cow's face it came from. Quick spec check. So we got a 40 millimeter case with a 46 lug to lug, 12 millimeters thick, which is very nice. And it's got a lug width of 18 mils. So decent dimensions. This thing will look good on my wrist. Science wise anyway. Ooh, okay, onto that bezel. So this is a field watch. It doesn't need a bezel and a lot of the common derskies you can buy, the bezel doesn't even have markers on it. It's bi-directional and there are no clicks. It's just friction based. Hi, I'm Kurt Santana and welcome to the World Bezeling Federation. A show defining the best bezel on a watch. Each contestant will go through three rounds. The look, the grip, and the fidgetability. Our referee today is none other than Big Boss Stan. Say hello, Stan. Let's get a bezel in. Huh, well, no grip on this bezel, apart from the angular shapes. Hmm. Looks like this would be one of those one-night stands where you try not to look at the face. Referee gives this 
Mmm. Now on to the grip. This includes the ratcheting, the purchase, how much strength it needs to move the bezel. And what in the God's name of hell is this thing? No ratchet. Referee scores this. Mmm. And on to the fidgetability. How much do I want to twist this bezel? Morning, noon, and night. Oh dear, Stan's not impressed. And he gives this a score of... Ugh. 12 points. And it goes not so proudly on our leaderboard for 2021. Arrivederci! Okay, now on to the dial. And this is the thing I was looking forward to showing you the most. It's a lovely dull blue color and it's got some texture to it. On the outside of the dial we have little applied loom balls and inside that we have a printed mini track and what looks to be applied hour markers in silver. Now like in many field watches you get an inner dial with 13 to 24 hours. Not this one. You get a second track with markers going up in fives. As you can see at the three o'clock we have a date window. It's not framed and I quite like that on this watch. Big lovely printed 12 with that that huge upside down triangle gives us good legibility, doesn't it? Below that triangle, we have that Soviet red star. And below the handset, I'm pretty sure that says Komandersky. Now below the six marker, we have another set of wording. I'm not sure what it is, but could be made in Russia. Comment below if you know. On to the handset, and I really quite like them, you know? They're sword style. From what I can tell, there's no loom on that seconds hand, but I love that little pop of red color. Okay, powering this Soviet rough and tough bad boy, we have Vostok's in-house 2414A. It beats at 19,800 beats per hour. It's got 17 joules and has a 38 hour power reserve. Vostok gives this movement tolerances of minus 20 to plus 60 seconds a day. Well, I'm very intrigued to see how it does on the time grapher. Time times. Time circuits on engage. Oh, this machine is running very smoothly. A beat error of only plus two seconds per day, a very strong amplitude of 265 degrees, and a beat error of 0.4 milliseconds. For not so much value, this thing is very good. I'll see you in the next one, and remember, if something can't be timed, spoon it. Bye! Whoa, well, that is not actually bad. I'm really surprised. I'm also a bit annoyed. When you pay for a mechanical watch like this for only £45, I wanted to see if I could tinker with it. Plus three or four seconds a day, that's pretty good. But can I improve it? If you do have a Komenderski that is running way too fast or way too slow, it's really simple to improve it. Unscrew that case back and there it is, the tank itself. Anyway, right on top of that balance wheel, you can see this little lever and it's hovering over a plus or a negative sign. Now, if your watch is running fast with a small little screw head, you can just move that lever slightly further to the minus or further to the plus if your watch is running too slow. Now, doing this for a couple of minutes and letting the movement settle on the time grapher, I was able to get the B error just down to plus one second a day. I think if I took my time a little bit more, I think I could get that down to zero. No, to operate this watch, is very weird. Screw down crown, there's no pop, but the crown detaches itself from the stem. This is a way of protecting the stem going into the movement. But when you do unscrew it, you get a little wibble wobble, wibble wobble, wibble wobble, wibble. And at first it feels like you've broken it. Don't panic. These crazy Russian Vostoks are all like it. Once unscrewed, you can wind it. Now there is no quick set date position in the crown, which means you're gonna have to go around 24 hours to change the date. But there's a little trick up our sleeves. Pull out to the last position and we can set the time. There is no hacking on this watch. But if we wind back to nine o'clock, to 12 o'clock, we can sort of quickly set that date. So loom on the handset, loom on those little loom balls. Let's see how it does in the dark. On my six and a half inch wrist, and I, God, oh, need to get it off that strap quick. Well, here it is on a green Cordura strap, much more fitting to the field aesthetic. I've got to say the head of the watch fits really nicely on me. I love those thin lugs. I also love the profile of it. 
Right. Okay, for a mechanical hand wind movement that only costs me 45 pounds, gotta say it's good value, haven't you? If that movement was running at plus or minus 50 seconds a day, I'd think it was a piece of garbage. I love the fact you can get in there and regulate it yourself. And I do love the quirkiness of the two piece case back and that wibbly wobbly crown. You don't get that on any other watch. So I guess from a standalone feature, it's quite cool to own one. 20 meters of water resistance, that's a joke. Surely the design team at Vostok can come up with a way of making these watches just a little more watertight, don't you think? It would definitely put our minds at ease a little bit when we're taking it out in the rain or even washing the dishes. So the water resistance bugs me. Now we come to that bezel. I'd rather it not be there if I'm honest. I really don't like that chrome plating and would love to see it in a stainless steel case. I'd definitely pay another 50 pounds to have a ratchet in my bezel stainless steel case and up the water resistance 80 meters. Yes, I decided to get my wife involved in the channel. She has no clue on watches whatsoever, doesn't know any brands apart from the big ones, and to get her first impressions on a watch could be rather insightful. Anyway, this is what she thought of the Vostok Komandersky. It looks like something you would get out of a Christmas cracker. I guess what this watch has done today has made me appreciate the Amphibia a bit more. But you can't deny that these things are value for money. This is the second Vostok I've had and I very much doubt it will be the last. From me, the Mad Watch Collector, I'll see you in a tick, 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 a tick. <laughs>